Hey students, uh, here we are in my backyard and the grass is greening up and it's a nice sunny day. Uh, we're going to be doing a virtual lab today. And the goal of the lab is to see how incoming radiation from the sun reacts with different types of surfaces. And so we're going to be looking at, looking at six different types of surfaces, all uh, types of surfaces that we would normally find on Earth. And we're going to be testing the temperature of these surfaces as they sit out in the sun over uh, about a 30-minute period. So we want to try to make some predictions on what we think is going to happen here. So let's take a look at the materials we'll be using today. So here are the six materials we're going to be using. Concrete, dirt, which is fairly dry, water, grass, sand, and this is asphalt. Uh, and we're going to be using this small infrared thermometer where you just press the button and point it and then it will record the temperature of the material for you. Now what are two things that would impact uh, how much radiation is reflected or absorbed and how the temperature changes for these materials? The first one is going to be albedo. So remember albedo is how much a surface reflects incoming light. <clears throat> So I want you to look at our materials here, just based on color, which materials do you think are going to reflect more light and which do you think are going to absorb more light? Uh, the other thing that we want to consider is the specific heat of these materials, which we've talked about a while ago. And so remember, something with a high specific heat is going to change temperature more slowly than something with a low specific heat. So I have these in the shade right now so that they're all roughly the same temperature. And we're going to go ahead and move them to the sun. And right when I move them into the sun, I'm going to go ahead and take their initial temperature. And then we'll write those down. And every 10 minutes, we're going to take a new temperature reading. All right, you can see I have my setup here. And I have labeled our different materials. And I've placed it on cardboard. Can you think of why I might want to place it on cardboard instead of the actual concrete in my backyard here? Um, and the reason why is cardboard is a not as good of a conductor of heat, and so it's less likely to transmit heat to or from our materials here. Also notice I have about the same amount of each material um, in the container to try to keep that variable consistent. So when I go to take my temperature here, I'm going to use my thermometer, and I'm going to get about an inch away from the surface and take that temperature, and it changes around a little bit. So this says about 75.9 for that first temperature reading. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and write that down for each of the different materials. All right, so I wrote down the initial temperature readings and I went ahead and used Fahrenheit. Um, I should be using Celsius since it's a science lab here, but I have it in Fahrenheit. So our sand is starting at about 75. Our soil is actually kind of high at 93. Our water is starting out at 63 degrees, asphalt 70. So I've taken one last temperature reading, um, and you can see things changed a little bit. Now it was a little cloudy over that last 8 to 10 minutes. And so you can see in the sand here, it really didn't go up very much at all. And the soil actually went down a little bit. Um, one thing I'll notice, or just tell you I noticed about the soil, is it's not very well packed together. And so that loose packing may allow the little breezes we have to kind of take away some of the uh, heat from that. So uh, we're going to move this into the shade for about 10 minutes and see what happens. Okay, so let's look at our results here. Um, first of all, I put a line where we took the materials out of the sun, and I also calculated the biggest change in temperature, the, the change in temperature from initial to final. So you can see sand had an overall temperature change in the sun of 30 degrees, soil 20 degrees, water about 12 degrees, grass only 8, concrete 24, and asphalt 41. Now I want you to think about the predictions you made just based on the color of these materials probably. Uh, did you expect these results? I imagine you probably thought that the darker colored asphalt would change temperature the most and if you predicted that you're correct. But remember the other thing we have to consider here is the specific heat capacity of these substances. Um, you'll notice that <clears throat> both grass and water 
had a fairly low change in temperature. They've also decreased in temperature a small amount. Um, and the big part of that is because uh, the water in water and in grass uh, has a fairly high specific heat. So those are cooling off relatively slowly compared to the asphalt here, which was has cooled almost 20 degrees in just a 10 minute period being out of the sun. And the same with the sand here, it's cooled quite a significant amount. And these two materials clearly have a pretty low specific heat capacity because they heat up quickly and cool off quickly. Concrete's the same way and uh, soil has a fairly low heat capacity as well. So we got some good data here and I hope that this lab helps you understand how different materials interact with incoming solar radiation.